Hello, and welcome to our MindBridge Edge session using MindBridge with SAP data. We hope you're enjoying Edge 2023 so far. My name is Michelle Alexander, and I'm a senior advisor of audit and enterprise transformation here at MindBridge. I'm part of the implementation team in MindBridge's global services organization, and I lead the implementation of MindBridge for internal audit and finance teams that are starting their journeys with MindBridge. At MindBridge, I work very closely with my data engineer colleagues, supporting customers with many different ERPs, including SAP. Hi, my name is Wing-Lang Chan. I lead the data solutions team here at MindBridge. My team works closely with our customers, helping out with all aspects of data from extraction, transformation, loading, and troubleshooting. Here's the agenda for our session today. First, we'd like to cover a bit of background about MindBridge and SAP. We'll then discuss the many ways how MindBridge can support your work with SAP data. Next, we'll provide an overview of some of the best practices or tips and tricks when working with SAP data. And then we'll show in tool the impact of some of these best practices on a GL analysis and demonstrate how a rich data set can add a lot of context and enhance MindBridge features. Feel free to enter any questions you have into the chat and we can respond as we go. So one of the key takeaways of this session is that one can definitely use SAP data in MindBridge and it's absolutely achievable. We have many customers in both our audit and assurance and enterprise customer bases that are successfully ingesting SAP data sets. We understand that SAP data sets could be perceived as daunting due to the sheer volume of fields and data tables, but we at MindBridge really embrace this as a, adding additional fields that will be useful for the end user can result in generating GL analyses with rich data that can add more value to the work being performed. Finally, SAP datasets are actually quite complementary to the MindBridge GL model. SAP's data types and columns are very well defined, which can lead to an easier experience when it comes to data field mapping, for example. Wing will show you some specifics regarding this later on in the session. Now we'd like to cover how MindBridge can support your work with SAP. As always, you'll have your dedicated MindBridge account team to support your journey your customer success managers, implementation advisors, data engineers, and support team have experience working with SAP data. So we will be able to support you throughout your team's journey with MindBridge. Secondly, MindBridge has a number of SAP specific guides in MindBridge knowledge base, including detailed articles on how to export SAP data and also map SAP fields to MindBridge columns. These articles can help your users demystify the SAP tables and provide guidance on what fields are what. We recognize that not everyone will be familiar with the BSEG tables or SAP specific terminology, so these guides can really assist your users. In general, the MindBridge knowledge base is an amazing resource for MindBridge users, and for those of you who are not familiar, the MindBridge Knowledge Base is a portal with over 500 articles, guides, and answers to frequently asked questions about using MindBridge. It contains detailed articles on so many topics, not only SAP, but include, you know, including navigating MindBridge features, control points, and more. And you can easily access the Knowledge Base at support.mindbridge.ai or from the support section in your MindBridge tenant. Finally, from our extensive work with MindBridge customers that are using SAP, we at MindBridge have a number of best practices and tips and tricks that we will share with you. These best practices will certainly be integrated into your support from your account team throughout implementation and beyond. So on that note, I'll turn it over to Wing to discuss these best practices and tips and tricks when working with SAP. Thank you, Michelle. I'd like to talk about some best practices in data field selection, extraction, formatting, and mapping. SAP's data model fits very well with MindBridge. Furthermore, SAP's fields such as company code, document number, and posting date are consistent everywhere. Note that to avoid, to avoid any ambiguity with field name translations, we often refer to them by their field names such as BUKRS, BELNR, and BUDAT. This makes field selection very straightforward. For most basic analyses, MindBridge has a minimal set of field requirements, effective dates, amount, and 
uh, and account number. However, if you provided just those, you would not have a very rich way to look at your analysis. An important feature in MindBridge is filtering. Once your analysis is available, how do you want to look at it? Think about what, what matters to you. Are you concerned about a particular business process, a document type, or a T code, or perhaps a plant, a, um, a cost center, or a profit center, or maybe a company code, a country, or a region, and so on. Filtering provides a mechanism with which you can craft the way you visualize your analysis. Any categorical field can be identified for filtering. Working with many companies such as yourselves, we have identified a commonly used set of fields that would be a, a good starting point. Now there is no hard rule on which ones to include, but we have found that having a few extra as a start does make it easier to explore and refine. I would imagine that not too many people here have memorized all the SAP codes or cost center numbers. To make things easier for users, MindBridge provides a way to map in a table so that they can be looked up via descriptive names rather than some obscure ID. On to data extraction. We, we have found that many of our smoother implementations have utilized um, a tool such as a BI tool or a data warehouse or a data lake as their data source. These would typically be accessible to someone on your team to build a, a script or work, workflow thus allowing the extraction process to be repeatable and scalable. Now, si since, MindBridge's, uh, since SAP's data model fits quite well with MindBridge's, the basic, the, the basic formatting process is quite straightforward. If you have ECC, for example, you would join the BKPF table in the, in the middle here uh, with the BSEG table, i.e. the line items on the right here, and use the um, you use as, as your key columns, use um, document number, company code, and fiscal year. If you have S4, you can simply use the AC DACA table. Now, depending on your data extraction tool, you may also need to apply a sign to your monitoring amounts. So for example, your debit credit indicator, if it's an S, you want to keep this positive, And if it's an H, you want to turn it into a negative. Some, some other formatting can actually be done directly in MindBridge. For example, here you can see that this field is created from a join rule. One important thing to note is that if your data extracts need to be well-formed uh, CSV, that is any delimited characters, commas, double quotes and all, all, all those special characters for CSV, they need to be properly encapsulated and escaped. The data, format, the data mapping process is also very straightforward. And as you can see, as you can see here, this, this is quite typical for most engagements. Now that your data has been extracted, transformed and loaded, let's go back to Michelle to see why this is useful. Thanks, Wing. Now I'd like to show in Tool a few benefits of including additional data fields as filterable columns into a MindBridge GL analysis. These filterable columns will be accessible in various MindBridge dashboards. So first here we see the risk overview dashboard. In this example, the user has not added any additional fields for filtering and has only mapped in the basic fields. Therefore, filtering of the visualizations and tiles are limited to what you see here in the red box, only about four filters. If one does add additional fil fields for filtering in MindBridge, you can see how the filter options are now reflected on this dashboard and can update this dashboard for views of interest when filtered. I have many customers that do tests with specific lenses, or want to see the data with specific lenses, perhaps by company, a specific profit center, and they want to be able to see the summary data on this dashboard. By adding additional SAP fields for filtering, this is achievable, and you can see them here, and it will certainly allow for quick views and confirmations of summary data on the risk overview dashboard. Moving on to the data table, Adding additional columns for filtering will result in the ability to add these new columns as conditions in your data table filters. 
Now the data table is a bit of an unassuming dashboard in MindBridge. It's not that fancy looking, but it will allow users to filter and search through the entire data set with the powerful filter builder. As you see here, the additional filters added will show in the list of conditions and users will be able to level up their filtering capabilities. The ones here that we see in red would not have shown up with the minimum fields. And you can see here that for company code, you'll now be able to select specific companies of interest. Perhaps users are only interested in seeing transactions or entries for a specific group of companies or specific cost centers, and having these filterable columns will allow users to perform these searches easily. As always with these filters, users can save these filters, and also they can select what they want to see or exclude these, what they, these conditions by using, utilizing the is not filter feature. Here you'll see uh, that additional fields will also display when looking at entry level or transaction level detail. This can provide users with so much additional context over the nature of the entry or transaction. This can also reduce some of the need to go back into SAP to get those additional contextual elements, which can lead to stronger insights and also time savings by having these rich SAP data fields included um, and just as a click of a button here in the GL analysis. I also wanted to mention that while in tool, uh, viewing entries and transactions in the data table as shown, um, users can click on the columns uh, shown in the red box to the right uh, to select which columns are displayed in the data table. So as we know, we can add many, many different additional columns and it could get um, quite large in the view for the data table. So selecting columns there, selecting which ones are viewable is a handy feature. So next, I wanted to talk about MindBridge populations. So use of um, one, MindBridge populations is one of our newest release features. Uh, and this can also be leveled up when users add additional columns for filtering. So if you're not familiar, populations are a different way of slicing and dicing analysis results in MindBridge. Users can use them to exclude entries or transactions that you know are not risky or are going to be tested separately. So like with filters, users can create populations from various conditions in order to help better focus your attention on specific areas. Once a population is created, you can use the population's filter to find or exclude activity on the risk segmentation and data table dashboards. This can help to provide deeper insights by reducing noise in your analysis. So here on this slide, if you're not familiar with populations, you'll see the population builder where users can create populations. In this example, a user may want to isolate only plants that are in the USA. So like with filters, one can use conditions and build in conditions that include the plant filterable column that we added from the SAP data. Uh, and that was added at the data ingestion stage. When the population is created, then the user will be then able to add this USA plant population to filters in the data table or filter these populations in the risk segmentation dashboard. So this is a very basic example of a population, but populations can be created to be multi-layered, a combination of and or, or conditions, utilizing conditions based on all those great SAP fields that were added for filtering. Again, these filters can be applied to show or exclude these population conditions. So it's really a great new feature that you should uh, check out in MindBridge. Finally, I'd like to end with risk segmentation, um, which is a dashboard, which is a newer dashboard in MindBridge, but also very powerful. So risk segmentation allows users to view risk in ways that are important to the user. Here, like what I showed with the risk overview, we see that there are a limited number of filters available to filter uh, this dashboard when no additional filterable columns are added. But by adding the additional filter filter filtering, we'll now see the ability to filter this dashboard by each of the fields that we added, which can be so helpful to isolate or alternatively exclude certain conditions from views. Perhaps you'd like to filter by activity, by a specific functional area or a specific profit center or a group of profit centers. You can now do this uh, with these, as we added these additional fields for filtering. Also note on that top line there of filters, you'll see populations. So this is where you, one could filter by the populations previously defined, just like the USA plant example. 
So like with data table filters, these can now be added as data fields uh, in building risk segments. Users can now create multi-layered segments and slice and dice their data into custom data segments. So this example, we are creating a risk segment to show activity by three hier hierarchy layers. On the right, you can see under arranged data structure, you can see the fields that we're viewing the risk by. It is risk by company code, plant, and user. So essentially, this will break down the risk scoring and show the distribution of risk and details by these fields. When this segment is generated, the segment will show the breakdown of overall activity by the hierarchy indicated, which in this case is company code, plant, and user. In this segment view, you can see that there is a total of 42 high-risk entries. And if you're interested in seeing where these lie, you can see that. So 34 of those entries are attributed to the first user and eight to the second user. Furthermore, this dashboard view can be further filtered by many filters that have now been configured that we see on top. Therefore, one could further filter this specific dashboard by a specific cost center or even account. These, the opportunities are endless and really unlocked from adding rich, contextful data fields that SAP provides. I do recommend that you watch the EDGE session that's dedicated specifically to risk segmentation in MindBridge called Segment Analysis, Ability to Set Focus and Zoom In and Out. So in summary, using SAP data is not only achievable in MindBridge, but can provide incredible additional depth and concept, uh, context to the analysis and the work performed. SAP data is complementary to our GL product, and there's expertise and support throughout the process from your MindBridge team. Uh, thank you. Uh, our contact information can be found on the slide, and we can use this time to address any questions that you may have. So Wing, it's looking like we do have some questions in the chat. Uh, let's see what we have here. Uh, this might be for Wing here. If I have some data in SAP and some data in other ERPs, can I still use MindBridge? Good question. Um, it, it would depend on like a lot of people who have SAP probably have um, data in other systems that are actually already imported into SAP. Uh, typically, you would have SAP as kind of like the central, your, your main source of truth. So um, quite often we, we do see that. Um, and what we typically see would be just the SAP side of the data. Um, now, if you want to import from two different sources, um, it can be done, but then you have to kind of start to be cognizant of, um, you know, mixing um, metaphors and different structures and different meanings of terms. So you, you do have to um, um, make sure that, you know, what is an effective date in one system is the same as the other one. Um, so our data team can help you out um, to, to decipher some of these um, when, when it time, comes time. Great. And we have another question. If I separate instances of SA, if I have separate instances of SAP for each business, can I still benefit from saving filters and or populations? Um, so we're thinking different company codes, but still the same SAP environment. Or we're we talking about completely different SAP installations. Um, I'm not sure. Let's just get clarity on that one. Let's see what we have here. When do you recommend that I use a filter versus that new thing, population tags? Yeah, absolutely. They're a little bit interchangeable. Um, filters can be used kind of ad hoc. I will say that filters also can incorporate populations. So it does get, because um, you can add populations as a condition to a filter. But um, I feel like if you would like to be able to filter other dashboards, um, we have the data table, but as well as risk segmentation, uh, that's when you would really lean on using populations. So if you wanted to create a population that had um, very, as I showed in earlier in the slides there, that you could provide a population just for USA plants, um, and you want to use it in various dashboards, including risk segmentation dashboard, you would need to create a population because save filters um, remain within the data table. So it really depends on if you want to view that 
we'll call it a filter, the population filter in other dashboards, including the risk segmentation table. But filters can get very fancy. Um, reach out to your customer success manager or your implementation advisor if you're interested in building some filters um, and when to use filters versus populations. Um, but they both, they're a little bit similar, but um, the population, um, having it set as a population, you'll be able to use it in different uh, MindBridge features. All right, another good question, I think here. Um, I have a large SAP data set. What is the size cap? Wing, I'm going to lean on you for this one. So right now, our um, we, we don't really have a, um, a strict hard limit, but there are practical limits. Um, Right now, our recommendation is on a per engagement basis. So uh, we're looking at 500 million rows. Um, so, so far, that's enough to cover pretty much all of every single one of our customers. If we do need to segment the data further, uh, we can discuss strategies for that. Once again, your data team will be able to help you with that. Excellent. Oh, and the other question, just some clarification on that one. Um, can I have separate companies in different analyses in um, in MindBridge and then save into concepts of libraries if I needed to? So I think I know what the uh, what what we're trying to get to on this question is that um, yes, um, filters are savable and they are. If you create a filter in an analysis, you can promote it up to an engagement level and a library level. Um, and you can be able to apply. There are some caveats. So again, work with your customer success manager or implementation av advisor on how that flows, but you are able to uh, build in those great conditions and um, promote it to different levels in MindBridge for use in different, uh, in different analyses that you do run. All right, and then how do I get help uh, for this um, in MindBridge? Um, absolutely. Of course, you do have your dedicated account team. Um, if you have any questions about this, uh, as I mentioned, your customer success managers and support um, are definitely uh, all equipped to uh, handle any SAP questions or any other questions that you have about MindBridge. Uh, but absolutely, um, in Tool, there is on the left on the bar, there is a support um, button that you can click to contact support. And then, of course, always reach out to your dedicated account team. All right, thanks. I think that's all the time that we have today. Certainly reach out to us. You have our contact information here, and we hope you enjoy the rest of your EDGE experience. Thanks. Thank you.